You guys, you're so smart. You're like, Bear, what's up with the water? And I'm like, uh, let's have a little patience, everybody. Why don't you produce the content I want immediately? I'm like, because I am the bear of bearindependent.com and thou shalt not tread on me. That's a snake, I know. Let's talk about water. Welcome back to the prepper classroom. Uh, you can see our whiteboard is still intact as we are working our ways down the board. This right here, food, we talked quite a bit about this the last time. Um, and many of y'all were like, but what about the water spare? We're all gonna just like shrivel up like dehydrated beef jerky and die. Which is why it says water over here. Simmer down, we're gonna get to it. All right, let's come over here. Gads and flag, oh, and we have some new additions as well. Oki Storm Chaser in the house. New York State Revolutionary War flag and uh, a Glock banner from the NWA prepper. By the way, by the way, New York State, New York State, skull and crossbones and the coiled serpent, the don't tread on me snack. WTF, now you're like, yeah, it's cool if we just kill live babies, it's no big deal. And by the way, you don't need guns. Oh, also give us all your tax money. What happened to you? What ha you were one of the original 13 colonies. Act like it. Sorry, but I digress. Let's get uh, one of these here markers. Water, the rule of threes. Does everybody remember the rule of threes? If you don't, get your notebooks handy, get your pencils out, or a pen, or whatever. Rule of threes. Rule of threes. Hope. Three, sex, Air, three men's H two O. That's water. Three days. What about shelter? Three hours. Food. Three weeks. These are all rough estimates. This is the general rule of threes. Some people add more, some people have less. Whatever floats your boat. Now that I'm thinking about New York, I'm like, yeah, but pizza, real pizza. And no, great pizza does not give anybody permission to violate the sanctity of life. But if y'all could preserve the sanctity of life and have great pizza, that'd be awesome. By the way, James, I'm still waiting on my white slice in the mail. All right, the rule of threes. Water, come on down. You are the next contestant on Bear's Whiteboard. All right, rule of threes, water. So, we have water. First thing, general body weight. So take your body weight, body weight, divided by two. So if we have, let's see, dude here, he's kinda husky. He's got big feet too, and uh, he's kind of upset. Urgh. Maybe he has spiked hair. Okay, we'll say dude here is, we'll just say he's, well, hold on. Maybe he has abs. Okay, and he's 200 pounds. Divided by two equals 100, not pounds of water, ounces of water. So take your body weight, divide by two, and that's how many ounces of water on average you should have. So 100 ounces, if we say that one quart equals 32 ounces, because it does. So this would be eh, equal-ish to three 
cords. Why is that important? Most camelbacks, your hydration bladders, are three quarts. You can get a two liter or a three liter. And liters to quarts, a liter is 33.8 ounces to 32. So this would be right about three liters as well. So quarts and liters aren't quite interchangeable, but with rough math, eh, they're close enough. So a quart equals 32 ounces. I believe a liter is 33.8 ounces, okay? So this guy, this 200 pound guy, should have about three liters per day. What if you're a big guy? I'm a big guy, man. Let's say you're 300 pounds. 300 by two would be 150, 150 ounces. And so if we go ahead and get our math on, this would be, if we did, that's kind of equal to five quarts, which would actually be 160 ounces. Okay, so five quarts. Again, quarts, why are we breaking this down in quarts? Your standard canteen, GI canteen, is a one-quart canteen. They make two quarts as well, but your standard canteen is going to be a one-quart canteen. One-liter Nalgene bottles are like the jam. I actually just found mine the other day in the back of my pickup truck on the floor in the extended cab, and like the heavens opened and angels were singing, and a single beam of light came down and landed on the Nalgene bottle, and somewhere, oh! could be heard. That's how awesome Nalgene bottles are, okay? So when you're trying to quantify how much water are we going to carry per person, quarts or liters, we will use them loosely interchangeably, and this matters. So why does this matter? Let's say I have a child with me, and that child is, child, and that child is 60, Pounds, I'm gonna want that be what 30 ounces of water. We're gonna call that a one quart. Here's the deal this is for your everyday water consumption, light activity. You will respirate in a day a quart of water just by breathing. You will exchange one quart of water just by simply existing, okay? And by existing and doing some light work, you know, you know, maybe you have one of those sit down, stand up desks. So you can, when you're typing your reports, you're getting some cardio in or whatever. Um, this is what you want, body weight divided by two, okay? So if you're 200 pounds, it'd be 100 ounces. If you're 300 pounds, it'd be 150 ounces, if you're 60 pounds, it'd be 30 ounces. Body weight divided by two, that's your ounces, okay? Now, strenuous activity, double it. Double it, yes. I have, there are many a day, especially when I'm outside getting after it, I've easily, in a, in a day, gone through a half gallon of coffee, two gallons of water, and a half a gallon of Gatorade, before the beer drinking starts in the evening. Yeah, that much, okay? And just suffice it to say, the lighter your urine is, I love it when we have urine talks here in the classroom. The lighter your urine is, the more hydrated you are, ideally it would be clear. Or like a nice pale straw color, kind of like a, like a Riesling, you know, but different palette. It is a slightly different palette. Um, you're doing good, but as it gets darker, you're not doing good. When your pee gets the color of this Gadsden flag, you're not hydrated. That's a problem, okay? So you don't want your pee to look like freedom, okay? You want it to look as much like water as possible. The more clear it is, the more hydrated you are. The less clear it is, the less hydrated you are. Okay, so take this and double it. Why is that important? Because now we're gonna look at something like our Bob, our bug out bag, okay? Bob, bug out 
bag. And shout out to whoever it was that said that I have serial killer handwriting. I know where you live. I'm just kidding. Where am I? Bug out bag. Stay, tape. Carrying capacity. Water weighs 8.35 pounds a gallon. Okay, so for a quart, we would take that, divide by four, we can say roughly 2.1 pounds per quart. So, how many quarts do we need to carry again? Let's just say you're a burly man, such as myself, and we're going to take five quarts. So, five quarts equals 10.5 pounds, not including what we're carrying it in, okay? Not including our canteens, our camelback, or whatever. So this is going to be more like 15 pounds. So 15 pounds right here is just my water, just my water for one day. Light activity, not strenuous activity, light activity, which means we're going to have to refill our containers, which means we need a way to Purify or treat or filter our water. So, knowing that we can't carry all the water that we're going to need, or if we do, we're going to severely diminish our carrying capacity as a whole. Um, so let's just say if we're using the 300 pound number, which praise the father, rucking is great for you. And if you don't eat crap all the time, you can weigh less than 300 pounds. I am proof of it. But let's just say that uh, we're going to go with the 300 pound number and we want our pack to be ideally 20% or less of our body weight. That'd be 60 pounds. Well, one quarter of our entire loadout, 15 pounds of it is water. Now water's good. We've already established you will die without it but we're burning 25% just on a day's rations of water. So this means two things, okay? Copy this down if you haven't already. Bibbidi bobbidi boo. Shout out to Bitty Boo, boo Brown, Bitty Boo Brown. You're awesome, sister. If you like home study things, go watch Bitty Boo Brown. She's awesome. All right, so over here, we have uh, treat or filter, right? And then we have our route. Now, let's go here first to route. Again, if your concept is that I have a bug out bag, but I don't really know where I'm going with it, you have failed before you've started. Okay, so this is how this works. We have our bug out location, our bug out location, our BOL. This is number one. And then our bug out location informs our bug out plan. That's number two. How are we going to get there? What are we doing? What's, what, are all the, what are all the things? Then this informs our number three bug out vehicle which remember, all systems ultimately degrade into a man portable system. So all your need to haves are on your body, in your line gear. I burped, excuse me. I'm the only human. I was thinking about that pizza again. All your need to haves are on your person. Line one, two, three. Your nice to haves are in the back of your Jeep or on the cart behind your motorcycle or strapped to your donkey, donkey, or whatever, okay? And then all of this, Number four is your bug out bag, which is actually line three gear. Okay? So if you have started here, you need to take all your crap and dump it out and then figure out where you're going. What's your bug out location? And then you need to reverse engineer a plan to get there. And once you know how you're going to get there, that will inform 
the vehicle that you're taking, and then when you know all of those things, then you can spec out your bug out bag appropriately. Why? Because our route, we need water. We must have it, we will die without it. So here, on our bug out location, somewhere in here is a route. Hopefully three of them. And what I mean by that is if here's our map and we are here and we want to get here, we want something like this and something like this and then something like this. Okay, there's a glare there. See my awesome map? I know, I know, A plus art student. Okay, so we want at least three different ways to get here from where we are to where we need to be. Now along there, are you ready for this? Switching colors. Because I remember El Bluo is Espanol for a blue marker. Um, no, 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 it's Azul. Y'all taught me. So somewhere along here, let's say, Let's just say that it's gonna take three days to get from here to here, okay? So I want one, two, three water sources. You see that? One, two, three water sources along my route because my carrying capacity sucks. I am not a pack mule. I'm looking at you, Jonathan. I am not a pack mule nor are you. We can only carry so much water and our operational um, ability, our capacity to get out there in the field and do things is highly determined by what we can carry, including our water. So our route is going to be informed by where is the water? Where can we get water? Now, if we're in our bug out vehicle and this three day walk is actually a two hour drive, we're good. But what happens if it's not? I need to know where to get water along the lines here, okay? And this is, we're gonna go deeper probably in maybe a part two on water about like water storage, water, you know, for the homestead things, shelter in place kind of things. But here just in a bug out bag capacity, water, treat or filter. How about both? So I use water treatment tabs, water tabs, um, I love the Sawyer filters. You have iodine water treatment. There's uh, bleach. Google how many drops. I believe it's eight drops per gallon, but I've been wrong before, so do not take my word for that. Google it or duck duck go it or whatever your preferred research method is. I love how people are like, Bear, I can't believe you recommend Google. Newsflash, Google owns YouTube, which is the platform you're watching this on. And I don't love either of them, but come on, guys. Like, just pick a search engine, okay? Uh, pool shock. Pool shock. Again, let your fingers do the walking on that one. Uh, but you should have a way to treat water or filter water. We have a Berkey at our house. We like it very much. The filters are very fragile. Understand that now. Have spare filters. Not just because they have a service life, but because they break. If you have a toddler that knocks your Berkey off the top of the water stand and poof, everything shatters. Not cool. Um, so you need a way to treat or filter your water and it needs to be a portable way that goes in your bag that will allow you to filter water getting from your bug out location using your bug out plan in your bug out vehicle with your water filter and water treatment stored in your bug out bag so that you can get to where you need to be so that you don't become a casualty of the zombie apocalypse, bro. Okay, so pause the screen, write this down if you need to write this down. Okay. So, you know, I do think we'll touch on it pretty quickly, just as far as some more math. Um, so let's do like shelter in place. So if we're going to shelter in place, shelter in place. So we want three gallons per person 
per day, okay? Three gallons per person per day. One gal is drinking, one gal is washing, and one gal is cooking. Now, you will hear bandied about the common statement that we only need a gallon per person per day. Yes, if we're doing nothing and not cooking and not cleaning anything and not burning any calories and not respirating and, you know, if we're not doing the things. But I submit we're going to be doing the things. We're going to be doing a lot of the things. So we want a minimum of three gallons per person per day. I can tell you from a recent mission that we were deployed on that it took five gallons per person per day, not including the washing of our bodies. Okay. So I have recently uh, moved to we need five gallons per person per day. Now here's the breakdown, right? We know that one gallon is four quarts. Some of us are gonna need four quarts. Some of us are gonna need eight quarts. Some of us are only gonna need two quarts. Okay, so just drinking one gallon per day. Washing is not just washing your dirty butt at the end of the day because you got uh, swamp dairy air because you've been out doing the things. It could be washing the utensils that we cooked with. It could be cleansing a wound that needs to be taken care of You know, twice a day. It, all kinds of things need washing. Yeah, forbid it's time to do laundry post-apocalypse. That's going to take a bunch of water. And have we talked about water being heavy? About 43 pounds in a five-gallon bucket? Yeah. Um, so washing and then cooking. All that freeze-dried food you got, guess what? Boil water, bro. You know, rice, beans, beans. It's, you need water to boil them in and water to soak them in you know, so forth and so on. So I think at a minimum three gallons per person per day, um, ideally I would have five uh, per person per day at a minimum. So let's say we got, we got five people and then we got five gals a day. So that's 25 gals a day times 30 days, so that's 750 gallons a month, times 12 would be 9,000 gals a year. Now, this looks like chicken scratch on that side of the camera. Can you all even see that? We'll put that there, like right there just for a minute. So here's the deal. 9,000 gallons is a lot of freaking water right? 750 gallons is a lot of freaking water. In a 55 gallon drum, you're looking at, this is 15 drums, right? 15 drums. Okay. For a month, right? That's a big deal. Or, um, well, IBC totes vary in size, but let's just say our goal is to get to 9,000 gallons per year or 750 per month. So now, and this will be the bow that we tie in this conversation, just conceptually thinking about sheltering in place. If I know I need 750 gallons of uh, water per month, so I got 750 gal a month. Okay, so I need rain water collection, and this is on all roofs. Okay. Wherever I can get it, I'm going to get it. And this would be your IBC totes plumb, you know, with uh, gutters plumbed into these or drums. Okay. I want, and this can be water that you uh, collect for washing, maybe even cooking, but, and you can purify it or filter it for drinking as well. And I, I get the question well, what roof substrate should I use so that I don't have toxic chemicals going into my water? And the answer is, I don't really know. I mean, I think a metal roof is good to go. Um, I'm pretty sure you can pass almost anything through a Berkey and get potable water on the other side of the filter. So rainwater collection, um, drums, IBC, totes, and the whole nine. What about 
well with backup power. This is something that we're working on at our house. A well with, we have wells with backup power. Streams or creeks or a creek, depending on where you live. We have these. We have a stock tank. There are springs on our property, okay? Um, there are lakes near us, but for some of y'all, there will be lakes near you. The point here is to identify where these water sources are and have a plan to gather 750 gallons per month. Now, knowing that that's our target, hypothetically speaking, five a day for five people, I don't need 9,000 gallons right now. I need 750 a month in a way to replenish at least 750 per month on a monthly basis, okay? So you could get a 10,000 gallon cistern and call it good or you could implement a way to use any or all of these to produce a minimum of 750 per month so that you don't shrivel up and die like a California raisin. So that's water in a nutshell. I don't believe we will do a part two because the whole idea of the prepper classroom is to do not necessarily a deep dive on everything, but to get you some foundational concepts to work from. And what I really want you guys to do is understand the math here understand the concepts here so you can take the same concepts that we talk about here and the same rough math and apply it to your situation so you can reverse engineer for you the ideal answer to your problems. I am very distrustful of when people are like, what you really need to do is, you don't know me, I don't know you. I don't know the unique circumstances of your life but I can help give you the tools and the mechanisms to figure out how to adequately address the issues that you're having. And that's what we're trying to do here in the Prepper Classroom. So if you like this, love this, do the comment, the likey, subscribe, sharey thing down below. It actually really helps us in the algorithm if you subscribe and if you share. Uh, if you want to be here, click that little bell icon. And if you give this a thumbs down, you think that Hillary is the ideal candidate in 2020. So uh, bless your little heart. Bless your little heart. Thank you guys so much. Thank you for supporting everything that we do. Shout out to our patrons. We couldn't do it without you guys. You guys are awesome. Shalom and blessings, y'all. Bear out.